I'm Dr. Ramitar. We are watching a series of lectures on uh, embedded systems. And the controller that we are discussing in this series was into chip microcontroller. We have seen in the previous video some of the basics about the chip microcontroller. Then we discussed about the register file of the microcontroller. Then we discussed the different uh, memories of the microcontroller of the chip series. In this video, we'll be discussing about the PIC or the chip interrupt. The different type of interrupts that uh, are available in the chip microcontroller. The topics that we will be discussing in this video are the interrupt process, how a general interrupt process occurs or takes place whenever some kind of devices request the service of the controller. Then we see specific to the thick series of the controller, what are the different interrupts, how these interrupts are set or uh, noticed, that will be seen through the different registers, and then we take up an explanation of the different registers of the thick series for the interrupts. The figure shows a general interrupt process. Supposing that a program execution starts at this particular point and it continues and the program continues till the end but somewhere in the middle while the program is executing let's suppose say at this instant of time some of the peripheral request the service of the controller so what should the controller do so the controller at this instant of time for serving the service of the peripheral device should save the return address of the next instruction where after servicing this interrupt it has to come back so the first task the controller will do it it will save the return address if it has to serve the condition if it has to service the interrupt then it has to suspend its current activity and after servicing that interrupt it has to come back and resume its current activity. So it has to save the return address and then take up the tasks that are written in the ISR that is the interrupt service routine. After completing the ISR that is the service for that particular peripheral, it has to come back. So it will retrieve the address of this next instruction back into the PC and the normal resume operation of the process will, will take place. So this is how a general interrupt process uh, occurs in a system. Let us uh, now see the different interrupts uh, that are available in the thick series of the controller. And we are specifically talking about the thick third family. And the controller that we are discussing is the thick 16 f 877 microcontroller. This third family of the microcontroller, that is 16 f 877 it contains 15 interrupt sources. And what these interrupt sources are, if you combine them, they turn out to be eight sources. If you can assume that timer is uh, one. So this comes from the external sources. This can come from the timers, that is the timer zero and timer one. It can come from the port B change, status change on the port B. It can come from the parallel slave port read and write operation. It can be through the A to D converter operation, whether the A to D conversion operation has been completed or not. Then use art, receive and transmit a type of interrupt, synchronous serial port, then capture, compare and the PWM 1 and 2. There are two interrupts of the CCP uh, module. They are the CCP 1 and CCP 2. These are the capture, compare and PWM. Then if a match is found between the timer 2 and PR2, then a comparator for the analog inputs, then doubly from write operation completed or not, and if the bus college takes place. So these are the 15 sources of uh, interrupt that are available in the thick series of the controller that is 16 and 877. Now, let's say uh, understand this uh, register file we have already seen, but let's uh, uh, study this uh, particular uh, table again specifically for the purpose of uh, interrupts. 
we know that uh, these uh, uh, register file or the this RAM area or the data memory. So what does it quickly it contains? It contains the special function registers, SFRs, and the general purpose registers. Now within the SFR, we said it contains the two types of in, uh, uh, SFRs. Those are the core SFR, for which affect the functions of the controller itself, and uh, the peripheral uh, SFRs, which are used by the peripherals. In the video that we are discussing, we are interested about the interrupts. So we have the interrupts here, the INT call PIR1, PIR2, PIE1, and PIE. A2. So you can uh, have a look here that uh, you have the int call, int call in all the four banks of the register so that the uh, necessary settings can be done for uh, each of the banks. Then the registers for the peripheral interrupts you have here interrupt enable in the bank one and uh, the status is indicated in the here in the bank zero. So you have some of the registers in the bank uh, zero and some others are in the bank one of the registers. So the topic of interest uh, for us will be the int call and there is a common format for, format for the int call. It is available at address uh, 0B, 8B, 10B and 18B in different banks of the registers. Then you have the PIR1, PIR2 at address 0C and 0D and PIE1, PIE2 at 8C and 8D addresses. So having seen that uh, these interrupt registers are available within the uh, register file or the registers of the TIC microcontroller series starting from address uh, that is uh, 0D. So having seen these registers that they are available as SFR within the, so what are the registers that we have seen? We have seen the int call that is available at address 0B. Then it is available in the bank one, bank two, bank three also. Then we have the option register, then PIE1, PIE2, PIR1 and PIR2. So these are the different registers that uh, are of interest to as far as the interrupts of the TIC series of the controllers are concerned. Now, after having seen these registers, let us discuss them in detail one by one. The int call register. It is basically a 8-bit register. And this register is basically used for setting the interrupts. Let's see what these different bits of the register are. The bit number seven is the GIE stands for the global interrupt enable bit. So the global interrupt enable can be enabled. It enables all the unmasked interrupts or zero to disable them. So we can enable or disable by setting this bit to one or resetting it to zero. PEIE, there is a peripheral interrupt enable bit. So if we wish to get an interrupt from the peripherals. So we can set this particular bit so that the peripheral interrupt uh, is enabled. So you can set it to one to enable and you can clear it to zero to disable all the peripheral interrupts. Then you have the timer uh, zero interrupt enable. So TMR zero overflow interrupt enable. So if you wish that uh, whenever the timers are involved and if they overflow the count, then an interrupt should occur. So if that is the requirement, then uh, timer zero overflow interrupt enable bit can be set by setting it to one or it can be cleared or disabled by clearing it to zero. Then you have the interrupt enable. So if you want uh, the RB0 port zero, an interrupt to occur from the external uh, sources, on the port B0, then we can enable it or we can disable it uh, so that there is no interrupt on the port B0. Then there is a bit for the RB1 
IE, that is the RD, port D, change interrupt But If you wish to know, uh, get the interrupt when the status of the port D changes, then you can enable this particular bit or disable to clear that particular interrupt. Then you have the timer zero overflow interrupt flag bit. So here timer zero IE interrupt enable bit was here and the corresponding flag bit is here, bit number two of this IE call. Similarly, the port D zero interrupt enable pin was uh, the bit number four and the corresponding flag bit is bit number one INTF. Similarly, we have the RBIF port B change. So port B change was RBIA. So here was the port B change interrupt enable bit. And uh, if the interrupt occurs, then the corresponding flag bit uh, are enabled here. So what do we have in this register? We have the three flag bits and the rest are the interrupt enabled bits. These three flags are corresponding to the timer zero, then port B or the external interrupt and the port B change interrupts. So corresponding flags are available here. So that means uh, if we wish uh, some of the peripheral interrupts to occur, then we can check this particular bit number six. And for all the global interrupt enabled, if you uh, uh, set it to one, then it enables all the unmasked bay interrupts. So having seen that, now let's uh, see the next register which are helpful in the uh, interrupt process. That is the option register. So what is the purpose of the option register is it is used to configure the timer zero pre-scaler capability or the post scaler. So what are the different bits here? The, it is an 8-bit register and you can see the first bit is RB, PU, this is a port D, RB is a port D, PU is the pull-up, the port B pull-up. So if we port B pull-up enable bit. So if you set it to 1, then the pull-ups will be disabled and if you clear it to 0, then because it is a bar here, port B, PU, bar. So it is a low active. So when you reset it or clear it to zero, then all the pull-ups are enabled, otherwise the pull-ups are disabled. Then you have the INT edge, interrupt the edge select bit. So if you want the, the interrupt to occur on the rising edge of the RB, port B zero, then you can set it to one, and if you want it on the falling edge, you can clear it to zero. Then you have the timer zero clock source select bit. So the clock source can be a transition on the POC, the timer zero clock one pin, or it can be on the instruction, internal instruction cycle clock, clock zero. Then you have the bit four, that is the POSC, timer zero source edge select bit. So how do you want to select the source? A high to low transition or a low to high transition? So you can accordingly clear it or set it for high to low or low to. Then you have the PSA bit. This PSA is the prescaler assignment bit. One prescaler is assigned to the WDT and zero prescaler is assigned to the timer zero. So we have the three bits. PS0 to PS2, that is eight different combinations, then the three scalar value can vary from one is to one, one is to two, one is to four, one is to eight, and so on, up to one is to 23, 256 uh, uh, three scalar values. So once the, all the options uh, have been set, that uh, what kind of three scalar, whether, whether you want the three scalar to occur or to be uh, clock, uh, timer zero module or you want it on, on the WDT module or you want the timer zero clock source on the high to low or low to high rising or whether you want the POCS that is the timer zero clock source selected 
transition on the TOCP or transition on the integral clock zero. Then the third register is the PIE peripheral interrupt enable register. So this uh, register is for the peripherals PS. The seventh bit is the PSPIE, which is a peripheral uh, uh, parallel slave port read write uh, interrupt enable. So the parallel slave port read write interrupt enable. So if you will set it to one, the interrupts will be enabled. You clear it to zero, all the interrupts will be disabled. A to D convert interrupt enable bit. So if you want the, the interrupt to occur or the conversion completion of the A to D, then you can set it to one, otherwise you can clear it to zero. Then you have the user to receive interrupt enable. Then the next is the user transmit interrupt enable. Then you have the synchronous serial port interrupt enable. Then you have the CCP module interrupt enable. Then you have the timer two to PR2 match enable bit. And finally you have the timer one or two interrupt enable. So here all the interrupts that are related to the peripherals so all peripheral interrupt enable registers are set in this. So what these different uh, peripherals interrupts are? Parallel slave port for all the different types of operations. Parallel slave port interrupt uh, enable, A to D conversion interrupt enable, use that, receive write serial port interrupt enable, and the CCP and the timer to, to PR2 match. Then we have the corresponding PIR1 register. So this contains the corresponding flag registers for the PIE1 registers. So whatever the, if you just have a match here, this is PSPIF, KDIF, RCIF. So this is the parallel slave, read, write, interrupt, flag, A to D conversion complete. So if the interrupt to occur and the, the interrupt, uh, the flag will be indicated here for A to D conversion completed. The user receive flag and user transmit flag. So this transmit buffer is empty or the receive buffer is full. Then these corresponding flags will be set to one. Synchronous serial port, then the CCPIP, then you have the timer two interrupt flag timer two to PR2 match flag bit and similarly last one is the timer one four flow interrupt flag. So all the uh, bits in this PIR1 is the corresponding uh, flags of the PIE registers. Then you have the PIE2 peripheral interrupt enable second register it contains the individual enable bits for the CCP2 module, then SSP bus collision and the EE from rise operation and the comparator. So there are one, two, three, four. Four interrupts uh, that can be enabled in PIE2 and the four are undefined here. So what these four interrupts are, this is CMIE, comparator interrupt enable bit, one to enable, zero to disable, EE from interrupt enable for the right operation, one is enable and zero to disable. The bus collision interrupt enable and the CCP2 module interrupt enable that are available in the PIE2. And the corresponding flag registers are available in the PIR2 registers for the PIE1. So, Having seen the different uh, interrupt settings, so what we saw in this particular class, we started with the general interrupt process, how, what different uh, uh, step of operation takes place inside the controller, whenever a device requests for the interrupt, we saw the general process. Then we saw what are the different sources of interrupts. We saw that there are 15 sources of interrupt specific to the controller, the fixed series controller 16F877. 
then we saw the general register files and we saw that starting from address 0b 0c 0d we have the int call the pir1 and pir2 register the corresponding uh, register for setting the interrupts are available in the bank one the pie1 and the pie2 then we have an option register which could be used for certain settings the pir1 pir2 pie1 and pie2 are the corresponding the interrupt enable registers and the interrupt enable flag registers for example the pie1 is the peripheral interrupt enable for certain peripherals and the pir1 is the corresponding flag registers so we have seen the complete process of uh, the interrupt uh, uh, process in this video so see you with more operations in the next